Yeah, well, I'm pr pretty shocking. They obviously have a, a plan to try and disrupt people's day-to-day -day lives. They tried to disrupt London Pride March uh, last weekend. They try and block roads to stop people getting to hospital appointments and stop parents getting their children to school. Uh, this isn't legitimate protest. It's a deliberate attempt to disrupt the day-to-day -day lives of other citizens, uh, completely unacceptable. I think the vast majority of the public um, are appalled by this tiny, tiny, very selfish minority. So we've changed the law recently. Um, the Public Order Act 2023 came into force um, just a few weeks ago. It gives the police uh, much stronger powers. And thankfully, when it comes to roads, you know, we haven't seen those enormous blockages on the M25 recently. Uh, on the streets of London, the protests are now getting cleared within a matter of a few minutes. So a combination of stronger laws and police action is really helping keep the streets of London clear. Uh, when it comes to things like um, sporting events and Wimbledon, again, they're just disrupting the enjoyment of, of everyday um, citizens, completely unacceptable. Um, now, the, thankfully, the interruption to Wimbledon yesterday was, was pretty brief. The people concerned have been arrested and charged, I think, with aggravated trespass. We had a meeting, the Home Secretary and I met with sporting organisations and the police yesterday uh, to encourage the organisers of sporting events uh, to increase their resources, more stewards, more marshals, um, look at using searching on the way uh, in as far as they can, and to consider taking out injunctions, which um, provides more legal protection. Because if someone breaches an injunction, there's then a much uh, stronger criminal uh, penalty. As so, they did at the Derby, actually, didn't they? they that's did, right, yeah. exactly. OK, uh, what about in your previous job, Chief Secretary to the Treasury? Um, I wonder if you could answer this as, with, with that hat that you used to wear. The FCA, Financial Conduct Authority, basically um, keeps an eye on the banks, calling them in today, the big four, to say, what are you doing about interest rates when it comes to savers? Mm. Well, that's a really good uh, question, actually, because we've seen mortgage rates go up uh, for people with mortgages as the base rate has gone up, uh, the Bank of England base rate's gone up, but very often um, some of the banks, particularly actually the, the sort of uh, traditional banks, the established banks, haven't increased the rates they pay savers commensurately. Some of the smaller challenger banks actually have, but the, the, some of the bigger traditional banks haven't. And I think that's, that's, that's wrong because it's, um, it's not giving savers um, the benefit of that rate. So I think the FCA are quite, quite right to uh, call them in and, and raise that forcefully. And should those interest rates uh, mirror what's happening as far as mortgage rates are concerned, you know, increase at the same level? Well, I mean, traditionally, that's what you would expect because, you know, savers will get paid more for their savings, mortgage holders end up paying more on their mortgage. You would expect the two to go up together, but that hasn't happened. In many cases, what savers get has stayed quite low, but the mortgage rates have gone up. So I think the FCA are absolutely right to look at that. Yeah, I mean, looking at this graphic, it's, that's illustrating that that just, doesn't, yeah. that just doesn't happen. Let's see what happens as a result of that uh, meeting today. Although you've got to be careful of regulatory overreach, apparently. Yeah, I mean, clearly we don't want the FCA intervening to, like, set the interest rates that banks pay, but equally we do need banks to behave in a way that's, um, that's fair and reasonable and is properly competitive as well. Talk to me about what's going on with the House of Commons and the House of Lords playing ping pong with this um, illegal immigration bill. The Bishop of Durham um, has said um, some youngsters could be wrongly assessed with their age and as a result <clears throat> deported and described that as horrifying and immoral. Well, I mean, the Illegal Immigration Bill um, makes clear that if somebody would suffer irre serious and irreversible harm, then they won't get sent to Rwanda. By the way, Rwanda is a country which the UNHCR itself uses um, to send refugees to. So the UNHCR thinks it's a safe country. Um, on the age point, um, I mean, quite a few... I mean, when I was Immigration Minister a couple of years ago, we found lots of people who were in their early 20s uh, would pretend to be under 18, they'd say they're 17, uh, in order to get better treatment under the system. So one of the things I think... Um, the, my, the current immigration minister is looking to do is introduce uh, more scientific age assessment techniques. So that might be an X-ray or that kind of thing. Uh, we're the only European country at the moment actually not to use scientific age assessment methods to determine if somebody is under or over 18. So that will really help. But look, the main point about this is that crossing the English Channel on a small boat um, is dangerous, it's illegal and it's unnecessary because France is a safe country. You don't need to flee from France. And, you know, we do need to stop it. The crossings are down by 20% year on year, but the illegal last immigration bill... Last month was bill, the highest. Sorry? The last month was the highest. Well, so, um, so this year as a whole, so taking all six months, not just one month in isolation, but the, the six months to the end of June, it was down about 20% on last year. So some progress has been made. We need to do more. 
and the illegal immigration bill will help us do that. When, We've got to stop these boats completely. When will you see the first people going to Rwanda? Because, of course, um, the courts have decided mm. that it's illegal again. Yeah, well, that depends um, a little bit on uh, the Supreme Court. So the government lost in the Court of Appeal, Did? although it was a split decision, and the Lord Chief Justice Still ruled lost. with the government, but we mm. lost 2-1, that's mm -hmm. right. So we're going to appeal uh, to the Supreme Court. So we've got to wait and obviously have that judgment. Um, the illegal immigration bill currently going through Parliament will help. We need to see, you know, exactly what form that emerges from the parliamentary process in. Um, but the Prime Minister has committed to stopping the boats. They're down 20%, but a lot more to do. Yeah, but if the Supreme Court finds against you as well, it's all over, isn't it? Nobody going to Rwanda. Well, I mean, so let's just wait and see what the judgment says. But and that's clearly, right, isn't it? Well, well, I mean, obviously the illegal immigration bill itself changes the changes statute, changes the law. So, I mean, that obviously would be a provides a, a, an even stronger and different legal basis to the one that exists today. So, yes, we're going through the Supreme Court appeal route, but we're also introducing uh, new law as well. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, talk to me about um, the next steps of the Prime Minister's action plan, antisocial behaviour. Ah, yes. Yeah. So, uh, we launched that a couple of months ago and it's being implemented sort of starting this week. So, one of the elements to that are antisocial behaviour hotspot patrols. Uh, we're funding that, a uh, million pounds per police force, uh, 10 pilot forces now, every single police force next April. And I was out and about in Lancashire in Chorley this week. Uh, they're launching their ASB hotspot patrols in Lancashire uh, this week across, I think, 14 towns in Lancashire. And it's getting officers to intensively patrol areas where there is antisocial behaviour to make interventions. So to arrest people if they're uh, committing ASB, uh, if they're young people, just divert them into more constructive activities. So uh, Chorley, for example, has a fantastic... A youth centre, activity centre called Inspire, which people can be diverted into. Uh, clearly, if they're committing a criminal offence, then, then prosecution can follow. We're also banning nitrous oxide, uh, which is a huge sort of scourge in many parts of the country. And we're also piloting in 10 police force areas, and we're going to roll it out across the country next year. Instant justice, where within 48 hours, people have to clean up graffiti, that kind of thing, okay. to actually sort of make a payback to the community if they are committing antisocial behaviour. I noticed from your brief that you're also responsible for, um, uh, as well as crime and policing, fire as well. Mm. Um, quick thought about what happened in Cambridge with the e-scooter that caught on fire. Three people died and we've seen <coughs> also from, uh, in fact, mm. uh, London Fire uh, mm. Brigade sat there and brought a video mm. in about e-scooters mm. exploding. Yeah, so I've discussed this with Andy Rowe, who's the, um, the, the commissioner of the London Fire Brigade. And I think London had its first e-scooter fatality uh, a few months ago. So this is a problem. I think it's particularly a problem where people have um, sort of added their own battery pack to a bike, for example. So we're very concerned about this. Um, I know that um, the Department for Business and Trade are looking at the regulations around battery safety. And um, we've got a cross-government group working on this. Uh, it is a concern, a growing concern. Um, we need to make sure these, the batteries are inherently safe themselves. And we need to make sure people are, are kind of storing them in the right way. But it is, a, it is a real concern. OK, what are you going to do about it? Well, we're going to... I think we're, we're looking at the, um, the, the fire... The, the product standards around these batteries to make sure the batteries are inherently safe and they don't spontaneously catch fire. So we're reviewing the product safety legislation. OK. Do you think, um, very briefly before I let you go, do you think AI would be um, a good minister for crime? I don't know. We'd have... <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to think I would. I would do better than ChatGPT. But I mean, who? Who knows? Well, tell you, next next time you want to ask some questions, instead of having me sit here, maybe type it into ChatGPT and see if see if it does a better job. Do you think they'd answer my questions? I, I've, I've, tried, I've tried to answer your questions. <laughs> you did today, actually. It's fair. You did. It's always great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us.